At first, I thought it was a scam or something. I mean, 100% unusual? It's too good to believe. So when it initially went down, I was sort of confused. I woke up to someone telling me they unboxed a burning all class unusual, and I was like, congrats, but it turns out everyone was unboxing them. I didn't even think about the rumors or the ramifications at the time. I just kind of did it. There's no way this can work though, right? Oh my God, it actually works. Dude, what if this is the most elaborate troll of all time? Oh no. And eventually there were a couple unusuals on sale on the community market going for 50 cents. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Are you tired of your boring old skins and looking for beautiful new ones? Tradeit.gg is your place to go for easy and secure trades within seconds. Simply pick and choose whatever item you want to trade from Tradeit's huge inventory. Verify the trade on Steam and you're ready. With the lowest fees in the market and a beautiful, easy to use UI, Tradeit also offers you the option to instantly sell your items for cash. We accept a wide variety of payment methods such as PayPal, credit cards, and cryptocurrencies. With thousands of trusting users and a great support team, Tradeit.gg is the go-to place whenever you want to try out fancy new skins. Start trading today at Traded.gg. The website isn't just limited to CSGO items either. You can trade for TF2 items or vice versa. And there's absolutely no gambling. Simply just trade for the item you want. You can use code the what or the link in the description for some freaking sweet bonuses. The date is July 25th, 2019. The good boys and girls of TF2 were frolicking on Dust Bowl without so much as a single bot to disturb them. And as that was happening, a Valve employee picked a couple items off the front page of the Steam Workshop, adjusted the hue of the case, and dropped a new patch with a couple of shiny new toys for the TF2 community to play with. Contented with a hard day's work, the Valve employee went home and got some sleep. There were plenty of highlights in the new case, but everyone's eyes were instantly drawn towards Ricardo making his official inclusion into TF2. What the community was not aware of at the time was that Ricardo was a sleeper cell agent, and while everyone was distracted with the new case, they were unaware that deep within TF2's code, something had gone <laughs> terribly wrong. Update itself, not important. Community bevels of some extremely mid-tier hats are added. Who the fuck likes McCready, by the way? You can have Nick Valentine, Deacon, Dogmeat, Hancock, or Paladin Dance. Behind this update, there was some seriously silly business brewing. Ah, the Vatican trading server. No silly, not the place with creepy guys in weird hats, but the TF2 server with creepy guys in weird hats. Although today the place is a bit of a ghost town, in its heyday the Vatican trading server was a prime marketplace for people looking to engage in the time-honored tradition of buying and selling unusual hats. But just what are unusual hats and why did they become such an iconic part of TF2? For the uninitiated, unusual items are items that add a shiny particle effect to a certain item. They can come on taunts and weapons, but the most iconic is the elusive unusual hat. These items are incredibly rare. So rare, that when spending money to open a TF2 case, you have a less than 1% chance of obtaining an unusual hat. This means that unusual hats are in low supply and high in demand, which also makes them crazy expensive. Some so expensive they can reach into the tens of thousands of dollars. They're what the TF2 economy revolves around, and everyone here in the Vatican is trying to get their hands on them. What do you think? Whoa, very nice. Look at that. It's on this very server that someone is feeling lucky. Even though there is a new crate with new hats and new unusual effects, they feel like rolling the dice on older cases. So they get their key ready and open the first crate, and they unbox an unusual hat. A circling heart unusual nickel noble assessment of hats. Nice. Then they open another crate. Boom, another unusual. The odds of this happening are insanely rare. There is a less than 1 in 10,000 chance of getting back to back unusual hats. They just hit the jackpot. Time to keep this ball rolling. Another crate. Another unusual hat. 
that 1 in 10,000 chance just became less than a 1 in 1 million chance. Either this is the luckiest unboxer in the world, or something is seriously wrong here. The other people in the server began to take notice too, and suddenly the whole server was in a mad dash to open as many crates as they could. Through rapid unboxing and trial and error, the people in the Vatican server found out that there was a glitch that changed certain crates' odds of getting an unusual from 1% to 100. There's a lot of crates in TF2, and not all of them actually worked, but if you opened crates 1 through 18, 61, 82, and 85, you would get a guaranteed unusual hat. However, people also discovered you can only unbox the series 1 and 3 unusual effects. See, unusual effects come in different series. Some were for big community events, and some are for different holidays. But the three unusual series you can unbox year round are series 1 through 3. This wasn't a problem, however, as some of the highest valued effects are part of these series, particularly burning and scorching flames. The incident was too big to ignore, so I expected Babel to do something at least. Therefore, instead of pouring my entire life savings into unboxing, I opened a single crate to leave a memento. Then, voila! Cloud9 Killer Exclusive. My best unboxing so far, because I never unbox a single unusual outside of that. I opened about 5 or 6 cases, and I picked up some really nice hats. I got Scorching Flames Texas 10 Gallon, a Circling Hearts Noble Amassment of Hats, and a Green Energy Data Mining Light to name a few, all of which normally would cost in the region of 50 to 200 plus keys. So because we didn't really know what was going to happen to the items that were unboxed, I only unboxed a single crate. It was like one of the uh, one of the early series with the Gen 1 unusual effects. The hat that I got, believe it or not, was my purple energy head warmer, the one that I use on my pyro loadout nearly constantly. So I'd like to think that the stars just kind of aligned for that to happen. This was bad. This was really bad. Valve accidentally took the items prized for their rarity and exclusivity and just made them cheaply and instantly accessible. This wasn't the first time this has happened to unusual items before, just on a much smaller scale. In the past, unusual taunts were just as rare and exclusive as unusual hats. However, in the Halloween update of 2016, Valve added the unusual fire for taunts, which greatly increased the odds of getting one, and therefore making them a common commodity. Nearly instantly, the prices for unusual taunts plummeted, Something I can attest to, as someone tricked me into buying an unusual taunt right before their prices dropped. Now, the same thing was about to happen on a much, much larger scale to a much more valued item. And it was only a matter of time before people outside the Vatican began to catch on to what was going on. And when they did, well, dear gosh, all heck was gonna break loose. After the news broke out about the 100% unusual chance, it was like a digital gold rush or a Walmart Black Friday with thousands of people rushing in to cash in on low price unusuals. A tidal wave of people began buying the glitched crates in droves. And before the crate depression, these crates were incredibly common and undesired, some selling as low as 3 to 10 cents. And over the course of years, people had a lot of these bad boys stockpiled up. One person could possibly have hundreds of these crates sitting around gathering dust in their backpack. So as people were rapidly buying and churning through the crates on the Steam market, new ones were being steadily placed onto the market at higher and higher prices, driving up their value from 10 cents to 10 or even 20 dollars. Those people who had passively let those worthless crates build up suddenly found themselves making hundreds and in extreme cases, over a thousand dollars just by selling crates on the Steam market. Um, I ended up getting really good unboxes, uh, the one crate that I unboxed. I sold all the rest of my crates because I didn't know like what was going to happen to the unusuals, and then I bought an Australian rocket launcher off the market with all the, uh, all the stuff that I sold. But as the prices of crates skyrocketed into the stratosphere, the value of unusual hats was plummeting. Just as predicted, the influx of unusual hats caused the prices to drop as people began selling hats in droves before Valve caught on to what was happening. It's like, um, Syndrome, yeah, Syndrome, Syndrome from The Incredibles, uh, when every hat is unusual, <laughs> no hat will be. A hat that would have cost 30 bucks before the depression, you could pick up for 3 to 5 dollars, a mere fraction of the price. Some unusuals were even being sold for 50 cents. 
One even sold for 10 cents. You could potentially buy an unusual hat for cheaper than a can of some goddamn Chef Boyardee. Amidst it all, god tier hats worth thousands were being unboxed left and right. The Sunbeam's Hong Kong cone, valued at close to $500, that's pretty low. The Burning Flame's Law, valued at close to $800, still pretty low. How about the Scorching Flame's Team Captain, valued at $2,000? It's still kinda low. How about the Burning Flame's Team Captain, one of the most expensive TF2 items, nay, expensive virtual items ever, valued at over $13,000 at the time. Three or more of these were unboxed during the exploit. Everyone had these unobtainable items, like the market would completely crash. I remember seeing Burning Flames hats for like as low as £15 on the market, which is crazy low. There were some people that got seriously screwed over throughout the whole ordeal too. On the Steam market, you have the option to buy and sell items, but you also have the option to place a buy order. Basically, if you put up a buy order on the Steam market, if an item comes along that matches the price you put up, it is immediately sold to you. Well, quite a few people had buy orders for unusual hats from before the glitch that reflected their old price, and those buy orders got flooded with glitched unusuals. People who placed buy orders on the Steam market were granted an unusual a mere fraction of the price they paid for it. Imagine placing $100 worth of buy orders on various hats and going to bed, only to wake up and realize you spent all of your money on fool's gold. And that's not the only group hit by the glitch. People have programmed TF2 trading bots that automatically accept offers if you give them what they ask for. And you can sell unusual hats to these bots too. And it didn't take long before people discovered they could abuse these bots to make infinite money. Step 1. Unbox a hat. Step 2. Dump it onto a trading bot. And step 3. Make off with the money like a bandit. The money was basically printing itself. Someone even pawned off a Burning Flames team captain onto a trading bot and made a couple grand. With unusual hats being more accessible than ever, people were buying them in droves and laughing at all of the traders that formerly had all of the glory. The traders that used TF2 hats like investments and had inventories worth thousands of dollars, they weren't as happy. While players were playing a game of Hungry Hungry Hippo for glitched crates and unusuals, the traders who had owned the affected hats before were on a rapidly sinking ship. People with thousands of dollars worth of unusuals had been reduced to pocket change overnight. Some traders, amidst the pandemonium, began panic selling their own unusuals, trying to minimize their losses. And when I say some traders, I mean me. I was young and stupid and sold my unglitched purple energy pugilist protector for less than half of its price. Some of the people who unboxed unusuals also started to panic and deleted the unusual hats that they unboxed themselves, fearing that Valve would ban them if they got caught. And then I stopped, like, buying crates because... Uh, I heard note that um, Valve were really angry. I think it was from a 4chan post at the time, and I saw a message that uh, Valve were really angry, and that they were going to ban anyone who who did this. I'm um, looking back, that would have been ridiculous because a lot of people unboxed these things. The pandemonium continued throughout the night and early morning, buying crates, selling hats, panic, and the pure and utter destruction of the TF2 economy in under 19 hours. That morning, the Valve employee woke up, took a nice shower, made some breakfast, looked at their phone, and had their heart sink to the bottom of their chest. At 2.07 p.m. Central Time the next day, a whole 19 hours since the bug snuck its way into the game, Valve finally took action and locked down all trading and selling of TF2 items by making every TF2 item untradeable. Nothing comes in or out. I have this time etched into my mind because after panic selling my unusual, I added some funds to my Steam account to buy a glitched hat the exact minute Valve froze trading. Again, young and very, very stupid. Valve said they'd work on a solution, but in the meantime, no trading and no silly business. So while Valve was off working on a solution, the TF2 community gathered together and did what they do best argue about stupid shit. In this time of great confusion, some TF2 players look to the past. Over a decade ago, back in 2009, there was an exploit in the early days that would accelerate the rate at which you could receive item drops. And the more item drops means more chances at an elusive hat drop. 
The way you did this was by installing an external program that automated the item drop process, along with probably giving your computer like 50 Trojan viruses. Valve took note of this and punished any exploiters by deleting any items they obtained through exploits and giving everyone who didn't exploit a hat called the Cheater's Lament. Basically, the moral of the story is, exploiters get nothing, and the good souls who didn't cheat get a shiny new hat. This gave the people who missed the event or didn't unbox anything an idea. People who didn't unbox or buy glitched unusuals should get their own Cheater's Lament. Posts about the Cheater's Lament flooded pretty much every place to discuss TF2, asking to be rewarded for not exploiting the bug. Many also adopted a strange sense of self-righteousness and tried shaming people who bought glitched unusuals in crates. The people who unboxed responded by saying they didn't do anything wrong, and why should someone be rewarded for doing nothing when they had a chance? This resulted in a total pissing contest for days on end. There really wasn't a good side to pick, as everyone just kinda looked pathetic. So most players just kinda grabbed a bag of popcorn and watched from the sidelines. It's good to see things never really change in this community. Meanwhile at Valve HQ, Valve employees were looking for a solution. Solution 1. Delete the unusuals. The problem was unlike the original Cheater's Lament fiasco, people paid their own money to unbox the crates and buy unusuals. So you can't just delete a product somebody paid their own money for. Or else, they riot. Solution 2. Just leave the unusuals tradable. Also not viable. This would destroy the TF2 economy. And Valve makes big boy bucks from the TF2 economy. So they'd want to try and keep the market healthy. Also, people would riot. What about solution 3? Just roll back TF2 inventories to before the depression. Sounds good on paper. Just make it so it's like the depression never even happened at all. But then you get into the nitty gritty details and this solution falls through too. What about all of the people who made trades unrelated to glitched unusuals during the fiasco? What about people who opened unglitched unusuals? Is it really fair to take those away? Also, people would riot. Someone spoke up from the back of the meeting room. What if we just look at the TF2 subreddit and see what they think we should do? Everybody in the room laughed and the employee was promptly fired on the spot. For days on end, Valve deliberated, leaving the community and their shiny hats in limbo. That was, until August 2nd, when Valve came back with an answer. The first unusual you traded for or unboxed would be fully tradable and marketable, while any further unusuals you gained would be locked to your account. However, if you didn't want the locked unusuals, Valve gave you the option to refund what you paid for them. They even restored the unusuals people panic deleted. The people who unboxed had essentially been handed a golden ticket from Valve and got the best possible scenario, outside of just making everything tradable. However, to the distress of everyone who missed out, there was no cheater's lament. The people who self-righteously didn't buy any unusuals in the hopes of receiving the golden spaghettio were left empty-handed in the end. People tried to complain to Valve, but the unboxers flexed their hats on them and that was kind of the end of that debate. So, did Valve fix the issue in the best way possible? Eh, depends on who you ask. Honestly, I think Valve's response to it was probably as good as it could have been. I don't think they could have handled it any better, honestly. I think that when people unbox a hat, they, they expect to keep it no matter what. So if it were to get taken away, or if there was actually like legitimate unboxes during that day, you can't tell, right? Damage to the market was too much, even with one unusual per man. Affected unusual's value will never get back to its original state. Bernie Plame's team captain as an example. I think they should have reverted the incident. Maybe, on top of that, grant a hat to everyone who unboxed in that period. I do think Valve handled it well. I, I, I think that was their best course of action, to be honest. And, and a lot of people are super salty that they missed out, and it's completely justifiable. I'm even salty that I didn't unbox more. Valve's solution wasn't terrible, I guess. It wasn't entirely ideal either, but the only way they could have reversed a permanent market collapse on the community was to delete the hats and refund the keys, which they weren't going to do. So that leads us to today. Has the Crate Depression had any long-term effects on the TF2 economy? Miraculously, not really. In Valve's statement, they claimed that the amount of unusuals they made tradable is roughly the amount of unusual hats unboxed in a single month. So, while initially there was an incoming surge of hats for sale, the market leveled itself out over the course of a year and prices returned to normal. In fact, since the depression, the price of many of the affected hats has increased. Even the hat I panic sold has doubled in price since I sold it, because I, I just can't seem to catch a single break, can I? However, even if the prices of unusual hats were able to recover, 
I feel like the Great Depression set a very dark precedent for video game economies. Think about it. The Great Depression happened suddenly without warning, and was the result of an unseen glitch in a tiny patch. Who is to say unusual hats don't just start dropping at 100% chance again? Who is to say the same thing doesn't happen to CSGO and knives start dropping at 100% chance? The foundations for these virtual economies are balanced upon shaky coding and negligent developers. All it takes is one gust of wind to blow the whole house of cards down. So just remember the next time you see that glowing hat, to tread lightly. <laughs> Guess you could call this update the Great Depression. Fuck off, Carlos. If you liked my video, YouTuber Casper beat me to the punch and uploaded a video about the depression a week before me. So if you want to know even more, I highly recommend it. Okay, the what? I love you. I love you, baby girl.